It was a good one that you can kind of um if you you can kind of uh like obviously Ragnarok if you can just visualize that map but then being expanded outside of that world, right? How sick would that be? Ladies and gentlemen, what about this idea? Think about this. It starts off as a battle royale, right? And hmm. it starts off as a big open world battle royale. And then you take this map, for example. If you know what Ragnarok is, it's a it's a remake, right? Valhalla remake. So those that are familiar with Valhalla, it's like, it says it right here, valley, grass, rock, snow, rivers, all contained within this, it's like this huge canyon. And I'm, you know, and so it's like, it's one of their biggest maps. I think it's probably the biggest map on Halo 3. Sick map. I liked it a lot. But imagine like if the world existed outside of that map, right? A battle royale, 200, 300. I'm, ta I'm talking like, I think they could push two, 300. Two or 300. That would be so sick. Battle Royale, two or 300 Halo, open world. And then there's like, let's say for example, there's a Ragnarok. There's a, there's like other well-known maps on in that big open world. And the gas is shrinking. It's a dynamic gas that shrinks with the amount of players that are left in the game, okay? Um, I'm still trying to think like, again, hear me out, hear me out. But what if like somehow, some way you can funnel these people into, let's say for example, Ragnarok and then boom, you made it. And all of a sudden the amount of people that are left are divided in half. And now you're playing a plant the bomb with the remaining people on Ragnarok, like a classic game mode. That would be pretty sick. Does that make sense? So the circle always ends in Ragnarok? No, what I'm saying is Ragnarok is one of many options, many classic old school maps, or even if there's like new areas, and then you create that sort of like that sandbox ending feel. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I doubt it could be made from a technical standpoint. I'll tell you right now, iron skill. You get some talented designers, you get some engineers in there. It can easily be executed, right? Like it's just a little trial and error. It's a little bit of testing, getting QA, Q and A on it, doing constant play tests for the first year, kind of, you know, block world, get the, figure out what the pacing is, figure out what the fiction is of driving these people to a specific area on the map, and then figure out the transition from that into team play, into an actual like game mode. That would be pretty sick in my opinion. I think, I guess what I'm hinting at is the goal is to expand on just Battle Royale on being the last guy alive, right? Like there's, there's gonna be an evolution of Battle Royale creation. Rather than just be the last team alive, like, why don't you get to a certain, like, if you could be a part of a group, if you can get to that specific goal with 20 other people, and now that 20 people become a part of something brand new, and hell, bring another server into the game. What about that, ladies and gentlemen? How about that? What about that? Two different servers that will eventually take the top 20 players of each server to play against each other in the final round, you know? I mean, there's so much you could do. I get excited thinking about Halo, as you guys can tell. But there was a map that I wanted to visualize. Was it this one? No, it wasn't this one. This one was actually kind of cool looking. 
but it was terrible. It was a terrible map. It was a pretty big... I can't remember. What well, maps? What maps do you think would be good for Halo BR? Man, there's so many choices. <clears throat> I think there's like so many choices. It's <clears throat> it's again it's again it's. <clears throat> <clears throat> It's how the world is built around the, the the maps. If they decide to bring back like old school classic maps. Yeah, exactly, Robots. Starts out as a battle royale, gets down to, say, 20 people, circle condenses into one of the specific areas of that huge open world, and specific area meaning a map, then a new game mode starts. CSGO BR, uh... I don't think that's interesting enough for me. your halo loot system look like i have to be honest windjammer i i think i think it's sort of like essentially it's just like how their their multiplayer would be like i wouldn't i don't think the i don't think the appeal here is to is to loot for very long and to, like People like it would be like in my opinion. I think the design should be around design designing set loot with with your own loadout. Um, how you're introduced into the game, I don't know. Like I don't know what that would be. Um, But again, it's all about power weapons, positioning. Like you'd have to really think of, you'd have to balance out your spawns, like your initial spawn, right? Um, Anything new? Is there anything like new that I could check out? Mavericks. Here we are. It's an absolutely monumental project. We're developing it to have huge amounts of bespoke, carefully considered content inside of that map. Each of those levels that we place into the Isle of Durham within that natural environment goes through three stages. First of all, it's a capital blockout. That's a very bare bones level that enables to test kind of lines of sight and basic properties of gameplay we might want to put there. The second stage is where it becomes a speed model. It has a thematic in place. We've made numerous speed models to fit within that map that enable us to pretty much create what you'd expect in many respects as a final map. It just misses the kind of third stage, which is a further art and detail and pass, where we create more clutter, where maybe we, you know... We don't want clutter. You get rid of clutter. Clutter is a no-no. We focus on the train yard, which is one of the many thematics that will exist on the Isle of Durham. So the train yard's comprised of speed model assets. They're a halfway house between an asset being a, a very early grey box design and a finished article. A champion has Being a, a very early grey box design and a...
finished article. These speed models are something that will be come to representing most of our levels in the forge. They'll come coming at a, a similar standard as you'll be seeing today. It, it gives you an idea of what to expect, both from a visual point of view and from a gameplay point of view. And what you'll find is that week on week as we go through the forge, not only will these areas evolve, but we'll be... I thought... That isn't this supposed to be a big, big, huge open world game? Replacing more of the block out areas with the speed model maps, uh, which will then have infrastructure, they'll tie into each other, they'll fit nicely into that natural world, and we'll start to be able to develop the faction narrative and other interesting ideas that you'd expect when you have the thematic. Looks like it has like, it's because like Counter-Strike movement or something. Everything we do visually and from the game. Okay, never mind. It doesn't look. At, no, sorry, Counter Strike, Counter Strike community. Please don't, please don't get on me for that statement. Okay, because it doesn't. Counter Strike's way smoother, just from watching. Very grounded in reality. Is this so 60 frames? You go by logic, and it just puts an additional sort of step involved in, in the development of some ideas that are a little bit more off the wall. Adding that infrastructural layer helps us make a believable world. Adds to the opportunities of interesting gameplay that we can throw in there. With Mavericks, we thought very carefully about how we're going to build this world. And the only way to do it, the only way to achieve awesome scale with you know, really high quality content and that kind of rapid iteration, was both for us to create new tools, which we've been working on. It doesn't years, look too bad. But it's also to combine that, the efforts of our design team, with the community. And through the Forge, for us to adopt a new approach that okay. enables us to communicate new ideas for the map, place things into the map, and kind of evolve yeah. areas of the map. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that's really, like really early, like player model slash player animations. I hope that's, I hope that's like super early I right there. Please, the it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be. With you, as we kind of, as we literally update the world week on week. Feedback from the community is really important. It's one of the crucial things that a lot of games get wrong in that they adopt this very traditional workflow of, okay, well, this is what we're building, okay, we've built it, right, it's out, and there's very little aftercare or thought to go back to that and try and refine it. And we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, but we're simply looking at that structure and thinking how we can, how we can change that and how we can deliver a better game. And that means testing assumptions, putting out what we think is gonna work, and, and that can be based off other things that are already out or they're not already out and we take that and we refine it and we have the tooling that supports that. So these levels fit into the natural world, that backdrop of map building a large game. Although you have all these interesting levels and that process that we're using to make those great, together to work, we think very carefully about how... <sighs> the first into the game. community involved. Bloody game world. Game modes. Some of this stuff, it kind of comes with the full launch. Works or it doesn't. And if it works, great. The area. If it doesn't work, even if there's some core of a really good idea there, it often just. The Mavericks world, the Isle of Dern, is an absolutely monumental project. We're developing it to have huge. I'm looking for the video that's like makes me go, okay, let me try this. The Mavericks world, the... Um, I'm still looking, I'm still looking. Is there gameplay on this? Maverick gameplay. There's got to be gameplay, right? Hello, it's Johnny from Eurogamer here, and this is Maverick's Proving Grounds, or rather this is some footage from the E3 Alpha demo of Maverick's Proving Grounds. Yeah, running at two frames per second. Automaton 
for this year's E3. Um, I had a go and I was able to capture- Don't tell me it's third person! Quick match as I try- But before we jump into Witcher's Squid um, and base. So how do you build an MMO with a story? Um, well, the story details were a bit scant, but you found a way you're competing for sort of renown and your place in. But I was caught in a little bit of a sense for, for what the game uh, flanking routes to get at people. Like this. Thank you very Yikes. much for watching. Do like and subscribe because it. All right. Um, I'm sure it's advanced a lot more. I, I hope. I hope. I think it's too early to. I think it's too early to look at it and judge. But that's what you get when you have all this information leaked out. Haffy, thank you for the 25 months. The captain, thank you for the five. Doc, just bought your shaker cup. We'll be making sure everybody I come across is well aware of the two time and his achievements. It's a blessing, actually. Thank you for uh, leading Twitch and providing groundbreaking quality content. Firm handshakes. Battlefield 5 BR, there's nothing out on the Battlefield 5 BR other than that little teaser at the very, very end of the official Battlefield 5 trailer. Whatever happened to Fractured Lands? Um, I think it's Fractured. <laughs>